<laughs> With the arrival of the summer travel season this weekend, millions of people will need rides to and from the airport. And Lyft's new CEO, David Risher, hopes to capitalize on that simple fact. He's a tech industry veteran. And he is hoping to rebuild the struggling rideshare company. Is struggling the right word? We'll talk about that. Here are some details, though. Lyft stock is down nearly 90% since the company went public in 2019, and it cut more than 1,000 jobs in April. Now Lyft is out with a first-of-its-kind feature at select U.S. airports. How it works is this. Customers can pre-order their ride as soon as their plane touches the tarmac. The app will then match riders and drivers for the best pickup time, taking into account everything from walking through the airport and baggage claim. And David Risher joins us now. David, thank you for being morning. here. Good morning. Uh, would you object to the word struggling? Uh, and will this new feature uh, change things? Uh, you know what? I'm going to go with a different word. We're going to call it uh, comeback. Okay. How about we go with comeback? Yeah. Yeah. So, look, Lyft has been around for 16 years now. We defined the industry. All of the sort of peer-to-peer, -peer, you know, a friend picks you up in his car. That was the early days of Lyft. Um, but now it's time for us to sort of make our name again. And as you say, we just launched this new travel feature just in time for Memorial Day. Um, and you described it super well, Tony. It's like from the time the plane touches down, we will do the math to figure out how to get you the car right as you get to the curb. Is that a matter of, of updated tech where you're going to be better than uh, other co competitors at predicting that travel time through the airport? That's part of it. I mean, look, so any great service starts with what does the customer want? And in this case, the customer wants to get out of the airport. I mean, I don't know about you, but like the sort of standing. <laughs> no, I like yeah. staying there. Do you like that? <laughs> Is that kind of your go-to? Kind of like, I'll just go hang out here. Well, no, and it's just so funny. You sit, you watch people, the baggage claim, and they're like stressed about the baggage. Is my bag going to get off? All, the, all they want to do is get out. So we try to make it so that with our technology and our product and service, by the time you get to that curb, you're walking off the, off the property or driving off. So one of the things I found really interesting, Tony mentioned the stock price uh, down 90% since the IPO, but 77% of the stock at Lyft is owned by institutional investors, which means that they kind of have a large sway as to what happens with the stock price. If they love it and there's upside potential, that's great. If it's, if it's headed downwards, they sell, and that can be detrimental to the company. So what do you say to retail shareholders that are holding the stock? Well, look, I just met with a bunch of shareholders, including some of our largest last week. Um, they're rooting for us. They're rooting for us because they're saying, look, this is a breath of fresh air. The rideshare industry, I think, has been a little bit, um, I want to say stale a little bit for a while, you know. But now with products like Wait and Save, which we uh, pioneered, uh, this is a way for you to save some money if you want to you know, save a little bit of money and take a little bit more time for your ride. Uh, products like this new touchdown that allows you to sort of walk out or even integration with your phone so that you don't have, I don't know about you, but I have the same couple of arguments with my wife all the time, all the time. And one of them involves, when should we get to the airport? Right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Familiar with that yes. one? Yeah. So I'm a little bit of a last minute guy. Anyway, Lyft will literally give me a notification saying, now's a good time to leave. We'll order your Lyft for you and it'll get you to the airport. So I, mean, I think that's what really drives the, the price over time. Some of us were talking before the show and I feel like with Rideshare, it's similar to other things. You use what you're used to using. It's the one I always use. It's the one I always use. And you only try something else if you're frustrated, maybe. Mm. How do you get somebody who's loyal to one of the other companies to switch? Is this enough or is there another mm. way to yeah. get some of that other share in the marketplace? I think it's such a, good, such a good question. And you're right. People do what they're used to. But here would be my argument. My argument is you actually want two apps on your phone. You really do. And I don't mind calling them. I think you're talking about Uber. Is that the company you're referring to? <laughs> that is the other I'm one. I'm trying to, yeah, yeah, I've heard of those guys. So here's my thought. Look, if every single person has Uber and Lyft on their phone, riders and drivers, it's actually better for everyone. Because sometimes one of them is going to mess you up. I hope it's never me. But at the end of the day, uh, you want both. And I think if we get both, then people are going to start to, to use us more because people like Lyft. You recently said that you are, quote, open to offers when it comes to selling Lyft. Why put that out there? Uh, you have to. I mean, if you're, you're a public company CEO, you always have to acknowledge that, you know, if the phone rings, you've got to answer. It's your responsibility to shareholders. But it's not our focus. Our focus is building great products for riders and for drivers. And I want to actually say that again, for riders and for drivers. They both really matter to Lyft. David, you were the 37th employee at Amazon. I think that's incredible. What was that like? And are you invited to the wedding? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, my invitation hasn't arrived yet, okay. so I don't know the answer to that <laughs> Put question. Put it out there in the universe. But I appreciate that. And Jeff, Jeff if, you're, if you're listening, uh, happy to show up when, when you want me. So it was amazing. It was amazing. I mean, this was a tiny little... $15 million internet bookstore. 
And um, look, I've been a book guy all my life. I love reading. I love technology. The idea of being able to put those together and have millions of people be able to buy books at the click of a button was amazing. And then my job was to start the music store, the video store, the toy store, the tool store, really build it into the everything store. It was a great, great challenge. I said he's um, the reason that I shop as much as I do. I think. <laughs> David, before you go, I Thank do want to ask you, because yeah. you're a CEO, uh, because we got this debt ceiling negotiation crisis really in Washington, yeah. uh, any advice to our dear leaders there in D.C. in getting this done uh, and what the impact could be to companies like you, all the gig workers who work for you, et cetera? Yeah, I mean, of course, my advice, like everyone else, is get it done, right? But honestly, I think it's, it's political theater. You kind of know where it's going to end up. My real view is if you want to go to the theater, I want you in a lift. Go out with some friends. Go out with some family. Go to the theater yourself and have fun there. Don't put your energy towards Washington, D.C. Yeah. That would be my advice. All right, David Risher. David, thank you very much. Appreciate being here. Yeah, it was super fun. Thanks to you guys for having me. Take a lift this summer. <laughs> I have. All right. Already. <laughs> We're already doing summer, it. Right? Downloading right now. <laughs>